Alleluia, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Alleluia, Alleluia, praise the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Alleluia, Alleluia, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah for the Lord God, omnipotent reign. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah for the Lord God, omnipotent reign. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise. Thank you, Father. Let us pray. Father, we thank you again for bringing us all together here this wonderful morning, wonderful day, the day you have, you Lord, you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, Lord, for gathering us together once more. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us to this moment, the moment of truth, where your word be unveiled unto us. Lord, please open our understanding to your word and help us, Lord, to grasp your word and not just to grasp it, but to be doer, doers of your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father. Speak to us, O Lord. For we'll pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We give God the glory again for this unique opportunity to come before His presence. We magnify His name because He's our Father. He's the King of Kings and He's the Lord of Lords. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Last week, we know we started, we started a topic that says what? Heaven is real. Heaven is real. So I've come to you this morning from the throne of grace. The Lord God Almighty has sent me to tell you further that heaven is real. And we're going to see from scripture as we discussed last week. We saw in the book of John chapter 14 where Jesus Christ was saying that he's going to pay a place for us. If it were not so, he would have told us. Because in his father's house, he said there are many mansions. There are many mansions. He has gone. And if he has gone, he said he will come again to take us to himself. John chapter 14, 1 to 3. He will come again to take us unto himself so that where he is, there you and I will be also. And we, we, we went through the book of Genesis. We saw that God established something in Eden. And Eden was a very big city at the time of Adam and Eve. And God planted the garden in the book of Eden. And the Lord God Almighty uh, uh, made that place a wonderful place for the man to enjoy. A wonderful place for Adam, Adam and Eve. Uh, to, en uh, to enjoy. If you look at uh, uh, Genesis chapter 2, if you look at verse 8, the Bible says, And the Lord planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And then the Lord gave the man a lot of things in that garden. He gave the man to enjoy the goodies of, of all he has created. And I made you to understand that Eden was on earth. Eden was on earth. And then we are talking about the connection. At that time, because the Bible said again, if you look at the book of uh, uh, Genesis chapter 3, verse, verse, eight, uh, verse 8, we are talking about the connection between heaven and earth. That when God created the heavens and the earth, the Bible says, the Bible says God came down to, to, to meet man. He said, he said, he said in, verse, in, in uh, Genesis chapter 3, verse 8, he said, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the tree of the garden. So God comes down. They had the voice of God. They had the full step of God. So you know what? God comes down to fellowship with them. I want to believe that they see God face to face. You understand? Until what? And I, and I, and I remember that the, the, the Lord was making us understand through that, that there is a connection. There is a connection when God created the heavens and the earth. There was a connection. Between the, the goodness of heaven, God, God brought it into what? Into the garden of Eden. The goodness of heaven. God brought it, connected into the Garden of Eden. So there was that connection. So I, I, as I give an, an explanation that we have the upper floor, we have the lower floor, and we have the ground floor, and so on and so forth. And so we want to see earth as the ground floor, because the Bible says the earth is the what? Is the full stool of the Lord. The earth is the full stool of the Lord. So God is present on earth. But here is there in heaven. And God wants us to enjoy the goodies. And so that's why he, 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 he um, planted this uh, garden in Eden. But unfortunately, Sin now 
separated us from what? From God. But where I'm going is this. If you look at the book of Genesis, just to show the connection, the connection of, uh, of, of uh, the way it, the heaven is, connect, is connected to the, uh, to, the, uh, to, the, to the earth. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, read the Bible. Genesis chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 1. Verse 1, following. It says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form okay. and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now listen. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light, it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Verse 5 says, And God called the light day, and the darkness he called what? Night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Don't forget, there was what? Water. There was what? Water all over. All over the earth. There was what? Water. And God, in the midst, the Spirit of God was moving. Did you read it? In verse 2. It said, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So everywhere was filled with with waters. So in the midst of the water, God said what? Let there be light. And what? And there was light. Where was God speaking from? God was speaking from heaven. God was speaking from heaven. And under where God was, under God was water. And through that water, God was trying to make a connection between the heavens and what? And the, and, and, and the place called earth, where God was trying to create. And we saw that in, us, in, in, in verse 6, and God said, Let there be firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Now listen, verse 7, And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament. Water which are what? Under the firmament. Are you listening today? From the waters which were above the firmament. So there were water under the firmament, and there was what? Water above what? The firmament. <coughs> and then, and then, and, and it was so. It said, and God called the firmament heaven. And God called what? The firmament that is separated. Heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. Look at verse 9. And God said, let the waters under the heaven <laughs> be gathered together unto one place. And let dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth. And the gathering together of the waters called it seas. And God saw that it was good. What am I trying to establish here? There is that connection. God decided there was water that was separating heaven from what? From earth. You understand? There was, there's, there was a firmament. There was something. God, God created something in between the waters. And that thing that God created in between the waters was the firmament. And God called that firmament heaven. You understand? He gave me the name. That this firmament that I'm doing is what? It's heaven. And he separated it. It's okay. Let the water separate. And the water above went. And the water below comes. Comes down. You understand? And then the firmament which God called heaven was what? Was suspended up there. Now listen. And God wanted to make a connection. And he said, no, 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 no. No. There is water under, under this heaven. That God called firmament. He now called it heaven. Now I want this. I want dry land to do what? To appear. I want what? Dry land to appear. I don't want to see water between the heavens and the earth I'm trying to go. And the water gather together and form a very big sea. And the dry land, God called it what? Earth. So you want to see that this, this world is actually standing on what? On water. Either I like it or not, we are standing on water. Even though God cleared everything and made the dry land earth. If you dig down onto this earth, you dig and dig and dig, what will you come across? You come across water. You understand? And either I like it or not, you believe it or not, there's water suspended what? Up there. That God separated the waters from the waters. So there is up there. But we're not going into that, uh, that uh, argument or discussion today. What I'm trying to establish is that God made a connection between heaven and earth. And so this was the beginning. And that was why when we read in Genesis chapter 2 verse 8, you see that God now what? planted a garden on heart where he placed the man called Adam and created another woman called Eve and gave them all the goodies. He said everything in this garden, everything, including the tree of life. Including what? The tree of life. They can freely do what? They can freely eat. But he told them not to touch one particular tree. But the devil came 
We know the whole story. Deceived them, and not man fell. They sinned against God. So, I'm trying to make you understand that God made a connection. Now, when sin came, listen to me, when sin came, now man was not comfortable. Human beings were not comfortable with Adam and Eve, the first human beings. They were not comfortable with God again. They now saw God and did what? Genesis chapter 3 verse 8. What happened? They did what? They ran. They did what? They ran. Because they know they have sinned against God. And so, there was not a separation between man and God. There was not a separation between the heavens and what and the earth. It wasn't connected again. But what Jesus Christ was trying to say, make us to understand, that there's still going to be that connection. I am going to prepare a place for you. And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again to take you to that place I prepared, so that where I am, there you will be also. Why we believe we're coming the second time? It's coming this corner because the, the connection between this heaven, the first heaven and the first earth God created, has been what? The connection has been what? Is no longer there. And God is coming to bring a connection between them. But unfortunately, it's not going to be this same heaven and this same earth that God created in the beginning that is going to bring this connection. Because the book of Peter made us understand that all this connect, this, 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 this only that, that, that sin that has separated us between, you know, the, the earth is already defined. You understand? This world is already what defined with sin. The devil moves around like a rolling lion, seeking. <laughs> he has come here now. So, God said, Where are you coming from? He said, I'm moving up and down the earth. The book of Job. He said, I'm moving up and down the earth. The Bible says, the devil goes around, he rather than seeing one war, one to the war. He has defined the world. And that is to tell you that this world will come to an end soon. Now when this world comes to an end, then the heaven, there will be a new heaven and a new earth that God is going to bring to replace this present heaven and what? Earth. God is going to bring it. Now let us read it quickly because of our time. The time is running so fast. Turn your Bibles with me. Turn your Bibles with me to the book of um, Second, Second Peter. Second Peter. Something is going to happen. Something is going to happen. This world, this earth, has been defied with sin. Don't forget the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 59. Verse 1 and 2. What did he say? Isaiah 51. I mean, Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. Behold, the lost hand is not shortened, that he cannot say. Neither is ears heavy, that he cannot hear. But your sin has made separation between you and your God, that he cannot hear you anymore. Can you see that? Not that God cannot help us. The connection right from the book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 8. The connection, right? Listen to me very well. The connection from where we read in the book of Genesis chapter 1 that God made the connection between the heaven and earth was destroyed. That connection was not the sin came destroyed it. According to Genesis chapter 3 verse 8 when man ran away from God and if you read that, God now did what? Drove man out of the garden. He said, now, this big city, this enjoyable city, this place of enjoyment, I'm prepared for you. Leave it now. And the Bible said, God now said, look, stop this man. God placed angels, preventing them to go and eat from what? The tree of life. They have access to the tree of life, but they refused to eat from the tree of life. They went to eat from the one the devil asked them to eat. The one God told them not to eat. So, that separation, he said what? He said, not that God is not willing, not that his hand is too short, not that his ear is too heavy, that I cannot hear. He says, sin separated you between God. Don't forget, we're talking about what heaven is real. That's where we are going. Sin has separated you. So, there's that separation. But listen, God is going to bring that connection. That's what Jesus Christ is trying to say. God is coming with, with what? With that connection. But before that connection, we come again. Now, listen to me. This present earth and the heaven that God created at first will do what? We pass away. 
Jesus Christ said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not what? Will not pass away. So if Jesus Christ said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away, then I want you to believe it, that one day it what? This earth and the heaven that was created according to Genesis chapter 1, will do what? Will pass away. Because God is going to bring a new one. How do I know it will pass away? Now I said, Second Peter chapter 3, look at what God said uh, now. Let us start reading from verse 8. I'll read all the way from verse 8. Um, verse 8, um, verse 8 to, to 13. That's what I told you last Sunday. I said, they are long, they are long passages. So I, I'm going to stop on this uh, uh, Second Peter because of our time. Second Peter chapter chapter three, verse eight to where to thirteen. Now I read. Listen, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing: that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. When Jesus Christ says, "Heaven and earth will pass away," now at so this time Peter was writing, "Heaven and earth has not what." Passed away. Now listen to me. And I said today that after about after over two thousand years uh -huh. that we are still reading from this scripture again, heaven and earth has not what has not passed away. Are you listening to me? It has not passed. So what I was saying, is Jesus lying? No. The father of lies who? The yeah. devil. John chapter eight. The devil is the father of lies. Read towards verse forty something. You see, the devil is a liar, not Jesus. So what Jesus Christ will say, that was Peter was trying to clarify here. These were people who ate and slept with Jesus. They ate together, they slept in the same place. Look at what he says, listen to me. A day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as a day. Verse 9 says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. And some men can slackness. I go and prepare a place for you, and I will come again. The Lord is not slack concerning that. But is long suffering to us, who are not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to what? To repentance. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Hey, over 2,000 years, he has not come. Will he come, will he come again? <coughs> Peter said, Look, don't take it, don't be ignorant of this thing. The Lord is not slack on from me, so he's waiting for more people to do what? To be saved. He's waiting to recruit more men, women, boys, and girls, children to heaven. And you are one of them. You are one of them that the Lord has been waiting for to recruit to heaven. That is why the thousand years or two thousand years over is like two days that has passed in the eyes of the Lord. Because one day is one. Now let's do what I said. He said, But the Lord. Listen, verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. In the wish, listen, the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up, all the mansion in this world. Now, listen to me. All the house of gold, all the investment, billions of dollars, billions of pounds that have been invested in building a project. The Bible says they will what? They will burn. Are you listening to me? They will do what? They will burn one day. Nobody dies out of this earth and take any dime. Anywhere he or she is going. Either you go to hell or you are going to heaven. Your chains, your gold, your money will not follow you down there. Because you don't need them over there. You need something else. <laughs> we'll get to that. Now listen to me. Verse 11 says, Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for... And hastening unto the coming of the day of God, when the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. And we ended there. We shall continue there next week by the grace of God. What is Peter saying? We... Believers in Christ, 
we are looking forward to the what? The new heaven and what? And the new earth. It will come to pass. Jesus has gone to prepare a place for you. My understanding from what Peter has said and from what Jesus Christ said and what Peter is saying here and what we are going to discover in the book of uh, Revelation where John the Beloved wrote. Now my understanding is this. There is this place in heaven that God has specifically prepared for you and for me. And that place the Lord has prepared for you and for me that is in heaven is in the form of the earth. And now when this earth and this present heaven pass away, God is going to bring that connection of heaven and what and earth. Now listen to me. We are going to the revelation by the grace of God next week. And you see something in there. God is going to bring in a new heaven and a new earth to replace this one because this one will be destroyed. This one will never be born. Everything will be born. They will all be destroyed. Now God is going to replace it with a new heaven and a new earth. You know what? The connection that God made at the beginning in Genesis chapter 1 is coming to be again. And so there will no longer be any difference between what? Between the heavens and what? And the earth. They will all be what? Be connected. You can just climb the ladder and say, oh, let us go and see God wherever in heaven. And God can just, God doesn't need a ladder anyway. <laughs> because it's everywhere. Yeah, we shall get that in the book of Revelation when we go on through. God will just go, ah, ah. he will say, ah, 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 John, where are you? Come on, can I see you? He yeah, say, yeah, God, I'm, I'm coming. You understand? But can you go to God now? No way. The connection of what? It has been disconnected. By the sin of man. But when there will be that connection again, the new heaven and the new earth will come again. Then, ah, man. You just go, I'm going to, where, where are you going? I'm going to see God. I'm going to see God. Free access. You see him. You see him. Face to face. <laughs> it is my prayer that will not miss it in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. The heaven we are talking about is the new heaven. And the new earth that Jesus has come to prepare for us. And is coming back again. Mm -hmm. Will you be there? Will you be in there? Will you be in that heaven? Or you want to inherit this earth? But there are some people who believe that inheriting the earth is this earth. You are not going anywhere. You just remain in this earth. I know you will be blessed in this earth. The blessing, the goodness of this earth, you will get it all. But you are going somewhere. If you feel you are not going anywhere, you are going to inherit. Sorry, this present earth what will be destroyed. So the inheritance of this earth ends there. But there is another new earth that you are going to what? Inherit. And I believe Jesus Christ was referring to the new earth. The present one, the blessings in it, and the new one that will come. Blessed are the meek. Because the arrogant, the stubborn, the stiff-necked will not be in that new earth. But they are all what? They are all in this present earth. I pray God will help you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Heaven is real. Let's bow our heads to pray. Let's bow our heads to pray. I want to talk to God. Talk to Him. If you are not, not yet a Christian, you need to pray that you become a Christian. Because this message about heaven, those who will make it to heaven are Christians. I'm not talking of those because you attend church or because you are born again. And your name is in the book of life. We shall read it. There's, there's another long passage in the book of Revelation we're going to read. By the grace of God next week, when we'll conclude this message. This is the second of the series. Ask God to have mercy upon you. Tell God. Cry to God. Say, God, I want to make heaven. Lord, I want to make your kingdom. I want to make heaven. Please help me, O oh God. I'm a sinner. I'm just a church goer. I'm a terrible sin. No matter how terrible you're sin, you ask the Lord to forgive you. And I sing, say, today you surrender to Jesus. You surrender. You surrender to Jesus. That the Lord God Almighty, you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And God shall write your name right now in the book of life. God shall write your name in the book of life. Let's pray. Let's pray this prayer. God will write our names. We magnify you, Lord, for as many who have heard your word today. Those right here in the church, those who are there, over the internet, around the world, we're going to come across this message. Lord, I pray, Lord, you forgive them their sins. You help them, oh Lord, to live a sinless life. 
by your grace and by your spirit. Help them, Lord, that they will make it to heaven. Even though that doesn't believe heaven, heaven exists, they don't even believe that you, God, you even you 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 are and you exist. Lord Jesus Christ, you will convince them through this message. This message will go around the whole world, and people will come and embrace Jesus. And Lord, to make heaven on that last day in Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We really appreciate you. Glory be to your name. For as many you have saved, and many you will be saving right now in the name of Jesus. We bless your name. Help us to be available next week for the part three of this message. Blessed be your name, Lord. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.